The Slavs are an ethno-linguistic group that originates from Eastern Europe. Rooted in ancient traditions, Slavic culture spans across numerous modern nations such as Russia, Poland, Ukraine, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Serbia, Croatia and Bulgaria, among others. The early Slavs were originally forest-dwelling tribal communities, gradually expanded across Europe between the 5th and 10th century Common Era. Christianity, both Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholic, played a major role in unifying and shaping the identities of various Slavic groups, with the Orthodox faith being more prevalent among the Eastern and Southern Slavs and Catholicism dominant in the West. Folklore and oral storytelling are essential to Slavic cultural identity. Myths of forest spirits, witches like Baba Yaga, and tales of epic heroes passed down through generations highlight a deep connection to nature and the mystical. Traditional Slavic music, often performed with instruments like the gusli, balalaika, or akkordeon, features rich harmonies and themes of love, hardship, and rural life. Slavic cuisine varies by region, but often includes hearty dishes such as borscht, piragi, and goulash. Festivals and rituals, both pagan and Christian in origin, are celebrated with colorful costumes, dance, and communal festing. All Slavic nations have some medieval Slavic DNA. In fact, in most Slavic nations, Slavic DNA is the majority of their ancestry. But what you might find surprising is that even in some non-Slavic nations, Slavic DNA is also very much present, such as among the Greeks or Finnic peoples of Russia. In this video, I have prepared an in-depth Kpatam analysis of various European ethnic groups, with the goal of determining their Slavic admixture. I used early medieval Slavs from Czechia as the Slavic proxy for these models. Let's start with the very south. The Turks have some non-negligible Slavic admixture at around 7%. Since the human origins dataset of Turks includes Turks of all regions, we can assume that Turks from the east of Turkey have less Slavic ancestry, and Turks from the west have more Slavic ancestry than 7%. The Greeks have around 34% Slavic ancestry. In this case, I used Thracian as a proxy for Hellenistic Greeks. In this model, I prioritized proper anchoring and sensibility over p-value, because as you can see, the p-value is quite bad. It is easy to pump up the p-val by simply selecting fewer right groups, but that ironically leads to less reliable results. Funny how p-value doesn't always correlate with good results. Keep in mind that both Turks and Greeks are non-Slavic ethnicities that carry a significant portion of Slavic DNA. Now let's move on to Bulgarians. This is the same model that I've used on Greeks, by the way. With this model, the Bulgarians score over half Slavic. Interestingly, Bulgarians also have a lot of Anatolian DNA, even more than Thracian. Next, I ran Romanians. Once again, same model as the Bulgarians and Greeks. The Romanians scored 59% Slavic. Interestingly, even the Romanians scored lower for Thracian than Byzantine. I suppose some of this quote-unquote Thracian could also come from Roman admixture, since the Thracians are similar to Italians in profile. Moving on to the Western Balkans, here we have the Croats. I made a simple two-way model for them using Illyrian and Slavic as left groups. Also, wow, look at that Piwal. I could have got this kind of Piwal for Bulgarians, Greeks, Romanians and Turks as well, by selecting fewer rights, but I've already explained why I chose not to do that. As you can see, the Croats are overwhelmingly Slavic in origin. We can assume Serbs and Bosnians would score similarly. Moving on to Pannonia, here is what the Hungarians score. Hungarians scored 82% Slavic, 14% Illyrian, 3% Western European, and 1% Uralic. Hungarians are Uralic speakers, but ironically, the Uralic component is the smallest among their ancient breakdown. The Hungarians are a heavily Slavic people. Now we move on to Central European Czechs. It is common belief online that the Czechs are majority non-Slavic due to their proximity to Germany and other Western European nations. However, even the Czechs are majority Slavic in reality, scoring 65% Slavic on my calculator. Now let's move on to Eastern Europe. The Belarusians score 87% Slavic and 13% Bronze Age Balt. I used Bronze Age Balt to represent Baltic admixture here because Medieval and Iron Age Balts were already admixed with the Slavs. Moving to the east, we have the Mardvins. 
the Mardvins score 63% Slavic, 2.5% Turkic, and 35% Uralic. I used Volga AK Iron Age samples as the Uralic proxy. Moving on even further north, the Lithuanians score 59% Slavic on the Baltic Bronze Age versus Slavic split model. As we can see, even the Lithuanians are heavily Slavic. Now we arrive at Northern Russians. Online, it is commonly believed that Northern Russians are majority non-Slavic, but that isn't the case in reality. Northern Russians are actually very heavily Slavic, scoring 70% Slavic on a three-way split model. You might ask yourself, well, how come they are so close to Vepsians, Karelians, and Finns then? And the answer is simple. They are close to Vepsians, Karelians, and Finns because the Vepsians and Karelians are over half Slavic themselves, whereas the Finns are over half Germanic, which shifts them closer to continental Europeans. Here is a model I made on the Finns. Here I use Balshoi Lenyi Ostrov as the proxy for Uralic ancestry instead of Volga AK because that improved PVAL and reduced standard errors. As you can see, the Finns are heavily Germanic and Slavic themselves, so it's no surprise they end up close to Northern Russians. With the Estonians, we see a similar story. They are also over half Germanic and Slavic. This is actually the reason why on G25 the Estonians and Finns are more southern relative to the Balts, because the abundant Germanic admixture shifts them further south relative to the Balts. But anyway, as we can see, the Estonians are around 40% Slavic. The Vepsians are even more Slavic than the Estonians are, scoring 48% Slavic, which is close to half. The Vepsians acquired this Slavic admixture through centuries of contact and intermixing with the Slavic tribes of Novgorod. The Karelians end up even more Slavic than the Vepsians, scoring 54% Slavic. I made a Slavic admixture map of Europe based on this bottom research. Feel free to share. Also, check the links to Andre DNA services and products in the description. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.